Over the years, the majority of traffic movement within arable systems tends to take place in tram lines. This is to allow a large majority of the field to maintain a good soil structure, minimising the area which might be affected by potential risk of compaction. In contrast, what we see in grassland fields is actually that traffic itself doesn't really follow a set pattern. For most of our field operations, tractors and trailers will move randomly across the fields and have access to the whole area. Research undertaken at Harper Adams University has shown that in a single silage operation, over 60% of the area of the field is covered by tractor wheelings. In fact, over the course of a year, 85 to 90% of a whole silage field is typically covered by tractor traffic through operations such as silaging, fertilizer application, and manure spreading. This can have significant implications for soil structure and grassland productivity. In fact, recent research at SRUC has shown that in areas where soil is compacted by machinery, silage yields can be decreased by as much as 20%. With the development of RTK and GPS technology, certainly confining traffic movement to parts of the field is definitely possible. But actually, what does this really mean in a grass silage situation? As part of the AHDB Dairy Grass Forage and Soils Research Partnership, we're investigating in a research setting what controlled traffic farming means for both soil structure and grassland productivity. Today, we're here at the demonstration farm in Yarn, and we're looking at the effects of controlled traffic farming in a commercial farm context. What really does it mean and how feasible is it to do? This is an autumn block calving herd. We milk 400 cows and we also have a 1500 acre arable enterprise. We supply Wensleydale Creamery, so we are aiming to maximise milk solid production and use as much forage as we possibly can. In the past, really over the winter, forage intakes have not been good. The target this year is 14 to 15 kilos and we are aiming to achieve that by um, producing four quality cuts of silage every 35 days. We know that uh, grass of every single crop grown on farms in this country suffers most from compaction and yet farmers seem delighted to drive all over the place uh, unlike on arable farms where people have tram lines to drive on. So really we're about to turn our arable unit onto a control traffic system and so we thought we might give it a try with silaging. We really want to take some of the learnings from arable farming and put them into grassland practice. Today the farm is lifting third cut silage on two recently receded swords. Throughout this season one field has been managed under a random traffic operation while traffic in the second field has followed set tram lines. Using RTK and GPS technology allows the farm to set these tram lines and generate traffic maps. From this, we can then monitor and identify potential areas of compaction. We're using the RTK for, the, uh, for mainly the mowing and the, and the raking up and the tedding, um, mainly to utilise the full width of the equipment. So here we're, we're looking at a control traffic system. Yeah. How exactly do you go about doing that? Well, first of all, we're, we're coming with the mower. Uh, on the RTK and we cut it um, at, at we use it 9.5 metres at the moment. So that sets out the, the way lines and the, and the wheelings for the rest of the machinery through the process. And then the forager will, will follow those rows up and down the field okay. and across the field. And the trailers are running just offset from the next rows so we can reach them in. So effectively pretty much most of the traffic is following the same tram lines? It is. Once the mower's been in and set that, that initial uh, wheeling, the, the, everything else drops into those wheelings right across. Has that been hard to do? It's not something that's done everywhere? Uh, no, it isn't anything that's done anywhere. This is the first one we've done. Um, so it's it's been a bit of a learning curve for us as well. Um, initially we would have liked to have reached the trailer and let the trailer run down the next swath. But it, um, in windy days it's just not, not practical. Okay. I mean, soil compaction is a bit of an issue mm -hmm. in grasslands. You've probably seen mm -hmm. it and the effects yeah. of it in the arable side. Does having a look at this make you think slightly differently about where you drive in a field or the potential Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, as for trailers, they're having to stick to a... When they're full, they're having to stick to that same wheeling right to the end of the field mm. um, rather than crossing the field in different directions mm. and just picking the, 
the quickest route to the gate. So um, in the long run, it'd be interesting to see how it all, all does pan out. With, um, you know, measuring the quantity of the grass and the time and the fuel that we're using to do, to do the job to do that particular field. Over the next few months, we will continue to monitor how soil structure, fuel usage and work rate, and grass yield vary between the controlled and random traffic fields. As mentioned, there's already a research project ongoing in this, taking place in Scotland at the moment. There'll be much more details both on the demonstration farm here and on the research project on, available on the website in the coming months. So check out dairy.ahdb.org.uk for more details.